Regina Simpson, 47. Today is March 13th, 2011, Oroville, California, and I am talking with my mom. And I'm Judith Davies, and I'm 75, I think. Yeah, I think I'm 75. Today is March 13th, 2011, and we are in Oroville, California, and I am being interviewed by my daughter. Okay. Well... Thank you for doing this, Mom. I'm really excited about having this opportunity to talk with you. And it's fun just looking at you this way, too, eye to eye. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's a very good idea. I appreciate your wanting to do this. Oh, absolutely. I think um, <laughs> family history is really important and your personal history. I really want to know about you. I mean, I've known you all my life, obviously, but you're still kind of a mystery. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. there's always that I'm mystery. I'm a mystery to myself. Are you? <laughs> I love it. Um, if you don't mind, I was. Uh, um, I would like to start off maybe talking about a little bit of um, your family history. Okay. Um, maybe starting with um, my grandfather, Edward Mills. Edward Mills, yes. Uh, he was, um, well, it was a revolutionary, um, well, it was an Edward Mills in the Revolutionary War, mm-hmm. and um, the... Uh, uh, it came over. The family came over on the Mayflower, so it goes way, way back there. And um, that is way he, back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was in the World World War One. He fought in World War One. And um, how old was he when he fought in World War One? Well, you know that I don't really know. I was trying. He was born in uh, 1892, I mm. believe. I think that's when he was born. And um, so. He was young, yeah, obviously. He's, he's yeah. been pretty young, mm-hmm. yeah. We still have his um, his uniform, his mm-hmm. military uniform. It was he was he was fairly tall, but he must have been very skinny because it's it's a very small uniform. It's kind of amazing. Yeah. Um, and then he and my mother must have met in Puyallup, Washington. What was they it? They were both born in the Middle West, but they ended up in, in the Pew- families. They ended up in Puyallup, Washington. Puyallup, Washington. Puyallup. Puyallup. Yeah. So Washington State. And Grandma's name was Edith. I know Edith Mills, but what was her maiden name? Mathis. Mathis. And her mother's maiden name was Meisner. They were of German extraction. Her parents came over from Germany. Mm. And do you, um, did Grandma Edith, she had, because um, my middle name is Abigail, and that, yes. I was named after, that name came from one of her sisters, right? Uh, well, great aunt. Uh, Abigail actually, um, well, no, I can't remember where, where exactly it came from. It was a family name, but okay. I can't remember exactly where it came it from. It might have been Grandpa Mills' <laughs> yeah, family name, too. Been, yeah. Okay, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> And, and um, you 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 don't really know you don't really recall how they met or that never came down in the family Not lore how really, they met. Really, but they after they met they decided the whole family mom's parents um, decided to come down to Orange County, California, to Anaheim, mm. um, where I guess there were some Germans there because Anaheim means Anna's home in German, I believe. Mm. Anyway, I didn't know uh, that. there was. Uh, I, for some reason, they chose to go to Anaheim, and um, they, uh, my uh, mom's parents bought an orange ranch, and then during the Depression, uh, they couldn't afford to to stay there any longer. So my father uh, kind of rescued them financially, oh. and my my parents moved into the um, ranch house with a five acres of oranges and um, the uh, and then he paid for my uh, grandparents to stay in a little house in Anaheim so um, so that's where I was brought up in that home what were your grandparents names did you call them well, Nanny? I didn't know them you see oh, my, oh yeah. uh, grandfather died before I was born and my grandmother who I called Nana uh lived with us but I was four years old when she died mm. yeah. and you were you were the baby um, I was the baby by because uh, quite a quite a few years uh, yeah my brothers were 16 and 15 years older than I and my sister was 10 years older than I so, so. um the the eldest brother was Maury Uncle Maury Mills no the bro- oldest oh, brother was Ted was Ted yeah. okay. and he was named Edward Mills but everybody called him Ted okay and he was the one who um well, he was a pilot. He 
he uh, had learned how to fly. Oh. And uh, he, when the war broke out uh, in Europe, he decided to go up to Canada and join the Royal Canadian Air Force. Mm. That was before the United States entered the war. Yeah. So, um, and he married quite young and had a, a young son, Michael. Mm. Anyway, he um, then, of course, in the Royal Canadian Air Force, he went to England and flew across the Channel. And um, but his uh, plane was uh, went down. His, he was flying a Spitfire, and it went down. I think it was 1941. And um, so you were six years old. Dead. I, yeah, I was you were really little. Yeah. yeah, I was little, and uh, I remember him sort of. He mm -hmm. was he was really a sweet fella, mm -hmm. and uh, but uh, my parents were just devastated, of course. Mm -hmm. So um, how did they feel about? Do you know how they might have felt about him going off to join the war effort? Well, I th they were kind of probably a little conflicted about mm -hmm. it because he didn't really have to go, but they understood. They understood that he had an adventurous soul. That's mm. the way they thought about it. Really? He was an adventurer, you know. But he was the eldest. Yeah, he was the eldest. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then born. Maury, and then... And then Joanne. Joanne. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Joanne, you and Joanne, or the uh, Aunt Joanne, were the closest in age. Well, yes. Mm -hmm. And by how many years? Ten. Ten. Okay, so she yeah, was she ten. she was ten years older than I. Mm -hmm. So that's quite... Were you a surprise baby? I certainly was, and... <laughs> 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 it was really an afterthought. How how old was Grandma Edith when you were born? I mean, how yeah, when you were born, yeah. how old? Yeah. She was 38. So she was she maybe had thought that, you know, oh, that yeah, was it. Oh, yeah, she she did. <laughs> yeah. Well, that sounds like a happy surprise. And you so you grew up, well, to me, I'm <laughs> very happy surprise for me. <laughs> I would be here. <laughs> yeah, okay. But so you grew up in Anaheim when there were orange orchards and yes, uh -huh. quite a bit different than the the Southern California that we know and love today. Probably, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Probably, yeah. The place, uh, well, the place where I lived, which um, there's now a, kind of a, a funny little old department store and lots of tar and cement there, you know. Yeah, like a, a, kind of a strip mall -y type place, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And didn't, didn't the, the ranch was taken... Did the ranch have a name? No. We just called it the ranch, Did but the ranch, the ranch yeah. was sort of exaggerating. Yeah, it was only five acres. Five acres. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, and then, but the ranch was taken by eminent domain, wasn't it? Oh, yes, it yeah. was. Mm -hmm. um, which was uh, my... Dad was sort of indignant about it. I mean, it was, and Can then imagine. they never did build anything there. They were supposed to build a school, and they never did. And so that was kind of, but my father managed to rescue the very corner. We were on a corner, and the very corner um, he leased to a gas company, so they built a service station there. So he rescued that part of it, but otherwise it was it was it gone. Was gone. Oh. Yeah. And how old were you when that happened? Were you, had you already... Grown up? Or? Uh, yeah, that was... I'd already left home, yeah. Okay. Already. And you went to... Okay, so you were born in 1935. Yeah. And um, you went to um, a Catholic school? Or you went to... High school. A Catholic high school. Uh -huh. And then you went to junior college? At Fullerton. Fullerton. It was a Fullerton Junior College now, and... Uh, I mean, then, and now it's a state university. Oh, Fullerton. okay, CSU. Is it at yes. the CSU Fullerton? Yeah, it is. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's one of the bigger ones yeah, of the uh -huh. 23 that there are. But it was oh. just a junior college then. And um, and you were a really good student, too, right? You. Well, I was a good student. Mm -hmm. I always enjoyed school. Mm -hmm. And um, I never... I never needed any... I never asked my parents for help. And I, you know, I thought, well, you know, why... I knew what I, what I was doing. Mm -hmm. So... Um, yeah, I enjoyed school. And you were were you valedictorian at your for the college or high oh, school? Oh, junior college. Yeah. Um, I was, or mm -hmm. one of the speakers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the speakers. Yeah. <laughs> and you had um, long blonde hair at the time, yeah. kind of image it you, was and, and long. you have uh -huh. and blue eyes, or no, you have gray eyes. Sort of gray blue. Yeah. Gray blue, uh -huh. and then um, and didn't you also? You were kind of you had a little wild streak to you, I believe. I remember a story. Well, didn't you <laughs> drive a convertible? Well, my sister had this wonderful Mercury convertible, and she let me drive it around, and um, must have been in the mid-50s. And um, 
I know I used to drive really, really fast. I, I recall driving 90 miles an hour along the <laughs> roads in, or in Orange County going down to the beach and so forth. So. <laughs> With your hair flying, I just have this great image Probably. of you, kind of Grace Kelly-ish. Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were. I've seen pictures. You were quite beautiful. <laughs> Um, and then uh, you were you were in a car accident as well, right? Were you driving when you were in that car accident? Oh, that accident! Yeah. No, my dad was driving. Uh, so was this like when you were little? I was in or high school. High school, okay. I was sixteen or seventeen, and um, well, my dad got distracted and went over the side, sort of a little bullock. Th- oh, what do you, I don't know what you call a little stone thing there, <laughs> and uh, like an he, island, like a well, sort of. Yeah. And uh, mom, my mom, and I fell out of the car. My mom was on the outside. Ouch. And um, so both of us got scraped. More th- I got Your scraped. Your knee, right? Your knee was yeah. pretty badly and, um, scarred. And my mom broke um, her uh, collarbone. Oh. And we both had to be hospitalized. My dad <laughs> felt pretty bad I'll about bet he the did. whole thing. <laughs> yeah. But back then, of course, they didn't have seatbelts. And, you know. No I mean, seatbelts, yeah. yeah. No, mm-hmm. no safe, very few safety features as far as. Well, that's yeah, true. Yeah, and then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but he didn't, he wasn't thrown out of the vehicle? He, no, no, no. He was fine. He complained a little bit about a, a headache or something. My yeah. sister said he was padding his part because he... He was what? Padding his part. What's that mean? <laughs> oh, you know, exaggerating to get a little oh, more attention. Oh, his part. Oh, yeah, okay, part. okay. Yeah. For so, I was focused on hair. <laughs> like, you know, so, because, um, well, I remember Grandpa Mills and... Um, a little bit, because he died when I was really little. I do remember when you got the news, because we oh, lived mm. at, um, in Oroville, we had moved. I'm, I'm jumping way ahead, but I do remember when you got the news that he had he had passed away. And Grandma Edith survived him by quite a few years. Yeah, she Because I have much mm. stronger memories of her. Mm-hmm. But I do remember... Yeah. Um, the house on the hill that they that they lived in, yeah. and they they had these huge cats, like Maine Coon type cats. Or just, no, they yeah. didn't have Maine Coons. I, they seemed huge to me. Maybe it was <laughs> yeah, relative to my own size. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so he, but he, my memories of him is that of, of Grandpa was that he was very sweet, you know. Well, then, he was. Mm-hmm. He was. <laughs> he, he and he was a smoker. He, he of course. He yeah. smoked, and uh, finally gave it up and um yeah he 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 was a smoker Mm. a chain smoker he really smoked a lot but he did finally give it up however um as probably as a result of all that smoke he did die of lung cancer Mm -hmm. but it was a few years yeah he was he was uh, he was how old was he was he in his 70s or did he not make it that far probably in his 70s Mm -hmm. i i'm not good on remembering people's ages exactly Mm -hmm. But um, he was probably in his 70s. You know? Yeah, because mm-hmm. he passed away when you, were you still married to Raymond, my dad? Or it was after, it was after you guys had separated, right? So, because it seems like you had, you had <laughs> is it hard to remember? remember? I can't remember. <laughs> just kind of how memories kind of are fuzzy, you know, they just kind of all blend together. You know, but um, just going back, um, one thing um, I uh, there's a I like the stories about how people met, and I'm wondering if you could touch a little bit on how Aunt Joanne and Uncle Jaime met. Oh, okay. Yeah, she um, she had been married to mm-hmm. Ben Warner, <laughs> and um, was she married young to Ben? Yeah, Warner? she was married at 18, and um, she. Uh, Kind of infatuated with him. He was a nice looking guy. He, ran, was he, he had old? a garage uh, in um, Santa Ana. Mm. And he'd been married previously and had children. And um, so she, we took, I, I was, I babysat the children. It was little Timmy, Tim and oh. Sherry with their names. They're real cute little kids. And, uh, but uh, Ben was turned out to be sort of a womanizer. So Regina, I mean, Joanne decided to divorce him. And, um, then she worked for a while for the newspaper gathering uh, advertisements for the mm. Santa Ana Register, mm. I think it was, or maybe it was Anaheim Bulletin. <laughs> anyway, um, and uh, but she'd always wanted to go to Mexico. I don't know why. It was just something that um, it always attracted her. Mm. So um, she decided to go to Mexico, and that's where she met Jaime. What part of Mexico? Was it actually Mexico City? It was Mexico City. Mm-hmm. She went to Mexico City. 
and uh, she had saved a little money and then she got a, a job. But uh, anyway, and then she met Jaime, who was um, such a great fellow. He was an architect mm -hmm. and an artist. He had an architect's license, and um, he was an artist. He painted, and um, he was um, so smart, so so much fun. It was really fun. To, I, I then she decided that I should come down mm -hmm. and stay with him. Um, I was I went to junior college, and then she suggested I come down and live with her and Jaime, and um, go to school at Mexico City College. Mm -hmm. So it was a was it called Mexico City College or was it called a university? No, it was called oh, Mexico called. City College. It oh. was not the university. It was an American school. Oh, oh, I didn't it know that. It was an American okay. school. Yeah. All right, and because mm -hmm. uh, I've seen pictures of there's like that. I have that one lovely picture. There's it looks like a garden party, in their in their yard, and it looks like um, there's a gentleman who's seriously flirting with you. Oh and, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Probably. yeah. And uh, <laughs> and you, well, you had going back to how you looked. You had um, the long, long blonde hair and light eyes. And didn't were you called El, El uh, La Rubia, or was there the blonde, or there's something oh. I, I thought I remember you telling me about some um, of the attention you would get. Because um, you must have maybe looked more exotic there yeah. than you would have in California. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, well, guapa, which is just means pretty, or. Yeah. Um, um anyway uh yeah it was it was really fun and, mm -hmm. and it was easy to learn spanish of mm. course had you taken spanish i i had only before? taken i had taken 4 years of latin mm. in high school and um a couple years of french in junior college but but that was good background mm -hmm. it was good background yeah and uh, it was easy to to pick up spanish because um you were surrounded by it mm -hmm. And um, so even though you were going to, were at the American school, was it mostly, you know, like American, what do they call it, ex, expats or was it, you know? Yeah, there, so, there were a lot oh. of veterans going mm -hmm. there. And um, uh, but they they had excellent courses in Spanish. I took mm -hmm. a wonderful phonetics course in Spanish, which is just really very uh, good course, and mm. uh, but the other courses were taught in in English. Mm. And how long did you? How long were you going to school there? How long did you live in Mexico City with Aunt Joanna and Uncle Jaime? Years, two and about well, two and a half years, I think. And had they had any any of the cousins yet? Was uh, well, no. John uh, Joanne born? hadn't gotten pregnant in her first marriage, and she wasn't getting pregnant in her second marriage, and um, she kind of figured she wasn't going to have any children. But after I went came back up um, California, she um, went to a doctor and found out there was some simple little procedure, mm -hmm. and sure enough, she got pregnant, and then she proceeded to have four four children. Yeah. But that was after I left. So it was John... Um, well, she started out with Kim. Kim. Oh, Kim's a girl. Yes, that's Kim, right. mm -hmm. and then Teddy, a girl, mm -hmm. and then uh, John, the boy, and Dario, yeah. the youngest boy. Yeah, and they and they all um, still reside. Most of them reside still in Mexico City. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. Except for John, right now he's on the coast in mm. in Oaxaca, mm. but uh, he's still in Mexico. Yeah. Hmm. No, I remember the trip that we took down there um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for Christmas. Oh yeah. You know, mm -hmm. to talk about like it, it. It it seems like a dream. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it was very dreamlike. My memories of that, but wonderful. You know, something that I treasure. The mm -hmm. El Coyote Flaco and yeah, the restaurant. Yeah, they had a restaurant, yeah. Coyote Flaco, the skinny coyote. Yeah. <laughs> they lived in um, San Francisco, the uh, Sosa. So, so, so. mm -hmm. uh, Is where, that where you were living, too? Is it the same place, or? Well, they don't live there anymore. Or, no, well, when you were living there, did they have the restaurant? Um, they got the restaurant later. They didn't have the restaurant when I was there. That was something they did later. Oh. And um, they didn't make much money at it because Jaime was so hospitable. He's always inviting his friends over. <laughs> anyway, they, he wasn't a real good businessman, mm -hmm. but they had a great restaurant. And wonderful host. Really good. Yeah, he's a wonderful <laughs> host. <laughs> I, know, I think I'd prefer the host. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you, so did you, how long were you there? Were you four years or two years? Well, I, went, I was there, I finished my two years of of college and uh, but it seems like I was there about two and a half years mm. altogether. And then you came back to the states. Well, yes, I had, there was a couple of uh, students <clears throat> there 
from the Bay Area that I was friends with, and they said, well, why don't you come up to school in Berkeley? That's mm. what they were going to do. So, um, well, okay, that sounds like a good idea. So after I graduated, I went up there, and um, uh, I stayed at International House, mm. I, and uh, that was fun because mm. there naturally about half half the students were foreign. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, it was very interesting. It was a lot of fun. It was an eventful time. It was in the 50s. Thing, lots of things were happening. Sure. And so... So there was, was kind of the the beat movement was kind of going on at that well, time? Well, no, it hadn't no? really started, but it was oh, about okay. to start. Mm. It was about to start. And um, that was the time when Sputnik... Mm. It was the Sputnik time and um, <laughs> Sputnik the time, time when Fidel Castro took over oh. Cuba. Mm. And, um, oh... Uh, I also remember de Gaulle uh, coming back and taking over France because mm -hmm. they had, that was kind of funny because there were some French students there and um, they couldn't agree on anything. I, I think that's a trait of the French. They, they they just didn't have any agreement about anything. <laughs> that must right. have been very interesting. It was fun. <laughs> so, uh, so that was International House. And how did did you? Um, how long were you at Berkeley? Did you? Um, a couple years. A couple years. Did you um, get a master's degree there? No, or? I didn't. Mm -hmm. I I was going to get. Oh, I was kind of thinking I'd get a teacher's credential, mm. but um, I really um, didn't like it that well. Mm. I thought, oh my God, I don't think I'm going to like being a teacher that well. Mm. And um, so I kind of dropped out of <laughs> of the program, mm -hmm. and I went to San Francisco. So you were in your 20s at this point? Yeah, yeah. 21, 20, yeah, must have been 21. Okay. And um, so, uh, and I didn't tell my parents, so I, I really didn't have any money. And um, I, I didn't want to tell them I dropped out of school, I don't know. So... Um, I uh, finally found myself a job <laughs> and uh, a place to stay. And, and then I met your father, Ray, mm -hmm. Raymond Bennett. Raymond Bennett. Mm -hmm. um, there was a um, market there, an open-air market. It was right downtown. And um, that's where we met. He saw me, I guess, and, got, and said hello. And mm -hmm. we just got acquainted that way. <laughs> So you guys met out, just you were out shopping, and he was out yeah, shopping. Yeah, it was and... uh, in this market where they had food most, mm -hmm. mostly. Do you remember what your impression of him was when you first saw him? Well, he was a uh, very nice-looking man, mm -hmm. good, good-looking good fellow. And uh, he was kind of funny. He always mm -hmm. uh, was kind of cheerful and made jokes, and it was funny. He was yeah, funny. Yeah, he was funny. Did yeah. he, uh -huh. Were you swept off your feet? Or was it more, you know? <laughs> well, you know, kind of. He, mm -hmm. uh, uh, he was, uh, he was, you know, he was always had some good ideas about where he. We'd go to movies, we'd go to see the foreign movies. We'd mm -hmm. go to see. He liked Vivaldi. They had concerts um, over at the Bellas Artes. Mm -hmm. um, Where's that? Well, it's in San Francisco. It's um, uh, oh, maybe I'm calling it the wrong name. Uh, fine arts. There's a. They built it for one of the expositions they had in San Francisco. I think it's still there. And they've got. Yeah, it's still there. Okay, and they have yeah. sculptures there. And they would give concerts. We went to concerts there. Is it the Palace of Fine Arts? Palace of Fine Arts. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm mixing it up with a place in uh, Mexico City called Bellas Artes. Okay. <laughs> well, they probably did similar things. Yeah, similar yeah. things. <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah. So, uh, um, so did we he just do fun things? Yeah, did, was it? Did he start? Did he court you? Oh yeah. And um, how long were you, was your courtship? Well, it wasn't very long, really. Let's see. What did we? Maybe it was less than a year. Mm -hmm. Maybe six months or so. Yeah. yeah. So, because um, let's see. So this must have been. You married in nineteen fifty nine. We married in 1960. 60. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, April 1960. And uh, okay, so you married. So, what did uh, what did your parents think of him? Well, um, <laughs> I I don't. They thought maybe I could have done a little bit better. I think because mm -hmm. he didn't have a college degree. Well, it doesn't, well yeah. doesn't really matter that much. But um, matter might have mattered, you know. Yeah. To them, I don't know. Yeah. 
Yeah. They, but they didn't. They didn't like raise any kind of objection oh, or anything. Oh no, 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 nothing like that. And it wasn't because he because uh, Raymond um, is it was Italian or half Italian. Half Italian. Mm-hmm. Did was there any kind of issue with that? I'm just you know. Oh no, no, mm-hmm. no, um, no. My parents were more alarmed when my not alarmed exactly, but uh, oh. questioned it when uh, Joanne married a Mexican mm. because. Uh, being in Orange County, the only Mexicans that they were acquainted with were um, farm workers mm-hmm. or people, uh, workers that picked the oranges mostly. So, and they they had farm workers, uh, migrant workers working on their their orchards. Yes, as well? they did. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, they did. So, so um, they they weren't accustomed to thinking of uh, Mexicans as being educated, mm. which of course Jaime was very well educated. Yeah, he was an architect. Yeah. So, no, there wasn't any. Um, uh, prejudice against uh, Italians, mm-hmm. and uh, we got married in my parents' home, and they which the... they still had the old home, the old ranch house. Oh, so that so hadn't that was, been okay. Yes, that was that was really nice, uh, nice place to marry. You know, we had a lovely wedding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we had I, a lovely yeah, the wedding. pictures. <laughs> now, you still have your wedding dress, don't you? Yeah, I, I think. Well, maybe did I don't know. I don't know if I still have that. I did I give it still. to you? No. no. Oh, no, I, I don't think I ever could fit into it. You were very slender. Yeah, I was pretty slender. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, so you and uh, Raymond, so he's Raymond John Bennett Jr. Yeah. <laughs> Some, his folks called him Junie. Yes. Thought, oh, God, that's terrible. So I, I, Shades of the Sopranos because he was called <laughs> Uncle Junie. Yeah. By the cousins. It must be. Uh, by his, time, by his but, niece. Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought that's a terrible name for it. Yeah. So, uh, of course, I always called him Ray. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Never Raymond. He had a wonderful family. Yeah, do you remember when you family. first met my? But his mother, um, Dorothy, my nanny. Ah oh, well, Dorothy. Yeah. Um, was she Dorothy Bennett at the time, or Dorothy? Because she was married um, a couple times. So she was Dorothy. He. She must have been Bennett. No, she was Bennett. Yeah. That was her second marriage. That's yeah. right. And the first mm-hmm. marriage was. Um, Stanton. Stanton, that's right. And she had children in both those marriages. She had uh, children in both those marriages. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she um, uh, was a real character. I mean, a force of nature. Mm-hmm. Um, just uh, sort of a dominant, not likely domineering, but domin- dominant, dominant type of person. Almost you know? domineering? Almost domineering, <laughs> yeah. So um, <laughs> I was always, well, I thought I need to get Ray away and make him more in, independent. Your your coat. <laughs> so because she she because he was the baby. He was the baby. Yeah. He was the baby. Yeah. But it was a wonderful family. There. Mm-hmm. Um, his sister Hope, mm-hmm. and Jim. They had five uh, children. They, everybody was just so welcoming mm-hmm. and um, full of life. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed that family. Mm-hmm. I really did. And so by this time, when you were when you married, Aunt Joanne was living in Mexico, so she was quite far away, and uh, mm-hmm. your brother Ted was had been gone for a long time, mm-hmm. and then there was Maury. Yeah, Maury. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Uncle Maury, um, were you guys close growing up? Well, was he not? He was so so much older, and he yeah. went into the war also. Uh, World War Two, obviously. World yeah. War Two, but um, and then. Well, then I, I don't know, I was in Mexico and, and up in Berkeley. I, I wouldn't say I was real close to him. Um, mm-hmm. He had a drinking problem. He was an alcoholic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, re- I remember. And that caused a lot of grief in the family. Mm-hmm. It was like the, you know, the big the black crisis. Sheep. It was always causing some kind of crisis. Was he the kind of like the black sheep, you think? Well, sort, sort of, of, yeah. Just, and... Yeah, he was a uh, really nice fellow when he mm-hmm. wasn't drinking. He'd go on binges. Yeah, yeah, I There was a binge type of um, alcoholic. Yeah, so he w- he would stop drinking, and then he would just mm-hmm. drink and drink, and he'd drink like a wouldn't like he couldn't stop drinking. Yeah. And then he'd completely stop, and, and then he'd, he'd come back stop. to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I remember that a little bit. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. not not much, because he was usually not drinking. But, yeah. yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, mm-hmm. but I'm just kind of thinking, just because you said that Dad's, or Raymond's family was... Um, Really full of life and close, and I and yes. I wonder if there was if you're drawing a distinction between. I think I yeah. think it, it was a distinction, mm-hmm. and I think, um, yeah, because 
Yeah, just like you say. Uh-huh. Yeah, that just kind of that mm-hmm. joie de vie, maybe, or just the mm-hmm. closer family kind of mm-hmm. emotional. Mm-hmm. I remember that growing up, just some of the conversations when Raymond's family would be, you know, like there would be more emotion, there would be lots of emotion at the dinner table. And uh, so I, I think I can relate to that, you know, that, mm-hmm. that distinction that you, you know, that yeah. um, I think you're mm-hmm. making. Mm-hmm. But, um, I, I want to talk about um, now we're you know moving up and uh, I'd like to talk about Roxanne and Edward and you oh, know we hadn't mm-hmm. planned that a little bit and it, mm. it it's sad you know yeah, but, it's, it's sad. so I you know I didn't ask you if that would be okay and if you don't want to talk about that that's okay but sorry no, no it's okay uh, our uh, we had Ray and I had the three children you were the youngest and um, uh, we started out with um, Edward, and then Roxanne, and then you, Regina. And uh, Roxanne um, was born with a uh, nevis, a, what they call a hairy nevis on her back, a fairly large black area. And um, it was we, a mole. Was it a? It's, it's a, mole, a mole, right? Nevis is just another name for mole. And um, so. But it became um, cancerous with melanoma. And uh, we had gone to a um, plastic surgeon because we were, had previously had, uh, you know, we were going to try to reduce the size of the mole and so forth. And um, then they discovered that... Uh, there was this lump in it, and, and it was called amelanotic melanoma, as I remember. Um, it was anyway. Uh, there wasn't too much you could do about melanoma mm-hmm. at that time. I, it's still a very dangerous type of cancer. So, very rare, too. Right? Well, I don't know how rare it is, but it's mm-hmm. uh, it's just it's uh, worse than the other types of skin cancer. And uh, she was only four years old, um, and um, she was the only my only child to have blue eyes, and um, she. So like your eyes. Sort of, yeah. Yeah. And um, so, it was a really hard time for us. Really hard time, and um, so um, that was bad enough, you know. And then, uh, but later on, Edward. Um, uh my uh, my son when he was 16 he had leukemia so i thought well that's just not fair you know i mean it really is not fair yeah. uh you think well, you lose one child to cancer that ought to do it mm-hmm. but anyway he um he got leukemia and um he um that was later on we were living up in oroville and i was married to tom and um, it, that was another very hard time for us. It was a very hard time for you, I think. Mm-hmm. I, I know you you were very distressed by that because um, we kind of concentrated our attention on him. Out of necessity. Well, yeah, but I think you, you were kind of... It was a hard time for you because you were only a year... Well... About a year younger than he. And two, actually, a year younger than Roxanne, I think. But I was two years older. Oh, yeah, months. two years yeah. younger than me. That's right. That's yeah. right. So, uh, I well, you, I could ask you how you felt about that time. I, well, if you want to talk about it. Um, it was just really hard. Yeah, it was hard. It still is, in a way. You know, it's like you, you just carry those with you. And I just wonder... You know, because I have my children, and after, you know, experiencing that, and even though I was really, really little when Roxanne died, I still kind of know about it. It's still there Mm -hmm. that I remember it somehow. Mm -hmm. And um, one thing I thought with my children, with Timmy and Angie, is that just the fact that they're here is -hmm. enough, Mm -hmm. that there's really nothing more to ask Mm -hmm. of Mm -hmm. people that we love you know, that they're just here and they're with us and we can share the life with them. But when I tell people about Edward and Roxanne, what they ask me is, 
how you've how you've borne it and and um and you know and I say well I think you just kind of continue living you know and um and and I wonder about that it's like how how you have borne how you've carried the pain of loss and the things that you've been through well um I guess I do have sort of a pragmatic attitude toward life and but um and the the thing is that you lose your children anyway. I mean, they don't stay your children. They become adults. And so, it in a way, it happens with all children. Um, but... Yeah. But... Um, um, there is kind of that bittersweet quality to children. You know, you just kind of... I can... I, you can remember them as babies, and then... They just mm-hmm. become something else. They become something else. They become mm-hmm. their own selves. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so you've lost them as children, but mm. you still have them. So that's um, certainly preferable to not having them at all. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're right. And it's almost the only, it, it's just to me, it's the only thing that matters is that, is that we're here. You know, it's like, um, and I just, I just really feel that. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I'm so grateful that you're here in my life and how precious you are to me. And and I think and I feel that I'm precious to you, too. Oh, yes. Dear. You know, well, you really validate my existence by being so um, such a good daughter. You are such a good daughter and mm-hmm. a good mother to your children, very devoted to them. And I think, wow, you know, I think you're doing a better job of being a mother than I did. I I, I would disagree because <laughs> they I, because I compared to you, I, I had it easy. You know, I mean, just the idea of <laughs> losing, you know, and like I remember yeah. when Edward that you said it was like, I think you said that it was like being struck by lightning again, like yeah, that that was it, struck twice by lightning. I mean. Uh, that was him. Yeah. yeah. And I just um I, I just want you to know how much I love you and admire you and treasure you. That you're I you know I know you you know, you're aging and the idea of you which I try not to think about, but the idea of you not being with me, I just I can't imagine. It's like you're a part of me. And <laughs> even maybe, you know, at the, at some point when you are not physically here you'll still be in me. Like, like, kind of like Edward, kind of like Roxanne. That we're they're always kind of here too. That when you love people, they're never really gone, as long as you remember them. And um, yeah, anyway, mm-hmm. do you, would you, you have a certain amount of immortality? Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's just so much more I'd love to talk about, and I think we're running out of time. We're out of time. So oh, okay. You know, is there well, anything? Um, no, I just. Uh, <clears throat> Appreciate your uh, going ahead with this. I was a little nervous. I know. Because I think, um, oh, I'm not a good storyteller. I don't think I'm a good storyteller. I know my mother used to sit down and tell all these wonderful stories, exaggerating somewhat, but mm. they were always interesting. So, Well, I but. think you're a good storyteller. <laughs> <laughs> I would disagree. You're a lot like Grandma then. So. Oh, thank you, Mom. I love you well, very much. Well, thank you, darling. I love you too. Thank you very much.